It's the Endo meeting. This is our first of 2024. It's January 3rd. Uh, we have some topics to get into. Um, the uh, uh, Sala would like to talk about compartments in the module map. And I have a demo for where I've gotten so far in network connectivity between familiars, uh, demons, etc. Um, and I'd like to do some agenda building for future meetings um, uh, for, for the upcoming meetings this year. Uh, Sala, go ahead. All right. Um, <clears throat> so I guess we can go back to this demo quickly. Um, so uh, this is Aaron's demo um, with, um, I guess I broke it in all possible ways, trying to understand, uh, you know, the different layers. Um, and um, one thing that caught my attention was, uh, was the idea that we were sending code to evaluating compartments. Um, and I thought to myself, uh, there's, you know, the potential for reusability of code. And um, I like classes. Other people have different opinions about classes, but sometimes classes have uh, use cases, um, especially with things like custom elements that don't work except with classes. Um, anyways, but uh, but you know to to make it simple, um, sometimes you will have a base class uh, that could be uh, in some compartment, and you want to extend it, and so you're importing it, um, and you you don't necessarily know um, um, like where it's going to come from and how it's going to be mapped, uh, but you 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 just want that to work, and so. Uh, in this demo, uh, I basically did my best to, you know, come up with a contrived scenario for that. Um, and I upgraded two cards to use classes uh, for the cards and the renderers. Um, and this is uh, the non-class based implementation for, uh, for that one card. Um, all right. So I guess um debugging i you know i kind of added okay let's let's close that stuff up um so at some point we're create, creating compartment for each um render for a given card um and basically at that point i'm uh, throwing that compartment in the console i've used again classes to i uh, kind of have like private fields um, and the idea is as follows. Uh, there's a parent compartment through compartment mapper, I suppose, um, where um, at that point, uh, certain modules are mappable through the module map argument, which is the second argument. Um, I just had no clue at that point, like what specifier could be used. You know, debugging was, was becoming hard. Um, so by exposing some of these things, um, I got to the point where I understood the module map is just a simple mapping, whereas module records are basically um, um, kind of private fields that are kept in a weak map um, for each compartment, um, giving it the static module record, the compartment, um, or in some cases, just the compartment and the module specifier. Um, and those are potentially not accurate intents for this particular um, record, but it seems to work. Anyways, so, so for this compartment, I'm also showing the parent compartment. And the reason why I'm showing it here is because um, the way the code was structured right now is there was no wiring for parent compartments. Um, and so I figured out a way to literally just give a compartment uh, constructor access to its own parent um, and nothing else. Like it doesn't get, um, but of course it can get the private fields because it's, in, you know, but anyways, that's, that's internal code implementation. It doesn't really leak anything outside. Um, any uh, code running 
and using the API does not really get to change any of that. Um, and so, you know, if we look at the parent, the parent has module records. Um, so I think with this, there's a general understanding of um, how things are working uh, with the current implementation. Um, <clears throat> um, and yet I'm not sure where is the best reference um, of the most up-to-date um, um, specs, I guess, that are, you know, I, I understand it's in stage three right now, if I'm not mistaken, or stage two, no? Okay, so I'm- Even at stage two, I'm not sure. We, we might be at two, I, I need to look again. Right, so, so there were some uh, differences between some of the um, uh, spec-related documents I found in some of the repos and the implementation. Um, and of course, it, it's hard with with the uh, you know like for for me uh, to to try things. I have to like uh, remove all the tools, uh, remove all the bundling, and that brings us to this. And here I'm like throwing all the different potential technologies together um, to try to create a browser-based uh, environment and each frame will basically act as a uh, virtual um, client of some sorts. Um, and the iframes um, can, can be isolated um, and all you do is use a message and then evaluate the code in the iframe and bootstrap it however you want. Um, and here I did um, something particular um, in one of the modules, if it finds that it's being bootstrapped in a compartment, it will recursively create multiple compartments and then it will keep mapping, um, keep, you know, mapping the specifiers to um, different mappings. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted to understand if the simple implementation um, uh, actually works. So, you know, absent a test case um, guided by, you know, specific text, um, uh, sorry, specifications, um, I'm kind of like just testing whether or not the current implementation works. Um, okay, so from here, we can go to, to a little bit of code. Um, so what the current what the current changes that I did look like are as follows. Um, in compartment, um, there is a uh, there, there was a part here that was a to do and it just threw an error. Um, and and so instead what I did is I, walked through the parent compartment records and um, did the following. If the parent record had a static module record, then I mapped that to a record for the parent compartment and the specifier itself. Um, otherwise, I just um, you know took the um, the, I guess it would be this kind of record exactly. Um, so, you know, um, anyways. Um, and the other change I think that had to happen is not to throw here unless there is no record in the module records of the particular compartment. Um, and to try to give a bit of context, um, this is basically uh, in both in both files. Uh, this is the part where the module map um, created a record. Um, is creating a record either with um, an alias namespace as a string, or the other possibility is that it's an object, I believe. Um, and that part particularly, I did not want to. Uh, change. Um, and so I'm only passing 
uh, I'm only dealing with module maps um, string to string at this point. Um, so, okay, so yeah, I think demo-wise that's, that's about all I had. Um, and okay. yeah. And then, so in summary, you are, um, yeah, in summary, are, do you have changes you wish to propose or questions you wish to ask? So I think I, there's a question first. Um, um, are those, um, you know, are, are changes at this point um, to, um, to, you know, in the places where I'm showing the current changes, that, that's really all, all that changed. Um, changes in just the alias name equals string, um, a place where, um, where a PR um, could be opened. Um, I guess, of course, the second question is, did I screw it up completely or is that like? Um... I think, yeah, no, you didn't. I think that this is actually really quite good. Uh, there is a missing feature in the current implementation of compartments in CES that is necessary for it to have parity with XS's implementation of compartment. And that is the ability for um, the parent compartment, as you say, to um, convey uh, static module records to the to construct to compartments constructed in its context, and then that recursively, as you've pointed out, um, a com every compartment should be able to bequeath um, or pass along the um, static module records from parent to child when the value is a string in the module map, um, and a pull request that does that is welcome. Um, as an exercise, I, I really enjoyed seeing the private fields in the inspector. I am not sure whether we can provide the same confinement guarantees with a class-based approach, um, but I, I'm open to having a conversation. We could put that on, an, on a future agenda. In general, can classes provide the, um, the, uh, the confinement guarantees that we need for compartments or other hardened APIs? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. I know that's a big discussion, and uh, I'm kind of like exploring it because I, I I actually like classes. I feel they're you know dismissed um, um, out of um, many many reasons, but they they also bring some uh, some cool new features that, that maybe require a bit more you know. Uh, exploration. I'll, I'll concede that this make compartment constructor conceit is elaborate and unusual <laughs> in an attempt. Um, but yeah, the P PR will not have any of that. That's just for my debugging purposes. But I, I, I can, I can make a gist to, you know, add more details there. Um, yeah, Thre threading just... parent compartment is definitely something that I have intended to do in the future. Right, and that required. Um, a make wrapped compartment constructor maker um, that basically handles that and passes an extra argument. This way, it's streamlined uh, without without much change um, anywhere else. Um, well, I, I think that I would in I would invite a more invasive change over uh, an even more distant abstraction than the already distant abstraction of the of the maker function that it's in a, a thing to keep in mind in this space that i have not spent nearly enough time thinking about and therefore just kept it on the back burner since this isn't pressing for our needs um the uh categoric we have a wrapped constructor for the compartment that we needed in a prior incarnation before we adopted XS as the engine that we run contracts in, uh, in order to provide metering, um, we needed to, to create a compartment in which there were certain um, undeniable and, if I recall, invisible intrinsics for the purpose of, yeah, they were invisible, they were censored. Um, 
in a in a child compartment and its transitive children um so that uh so that a contract could not ex escape its meter we now have native metering on excess but nevertheless the motivation uh, i expect it to be i expect to have that that the motivation may come back at some day in a form that i don't know right. uh yeah all right i think that uh yeah thank you for bringing this uh pr would be welcome for that for the feature a good way to know whether you've succeeded is whether it has parity with excess um the the specification of this feature is very much one of the um at the time of the construction of a compartment it may capture records static records not instances from its parent compartment and then the parent compartment reference is useless uh, or, or like literally should be dropped. It should never be used again outside of the compartment constructor. Um, right. So, so can I ask um, just for, for a bit more clarity here? So, so basically um, we're recreating in the, in the uh, child compartments, uh, a new instance from the static module record, mm -hmm. as opposed to we're referring to the parent compartments own instance Um so code in the um, child compartment um, is not referring to the instance that's already existing, but rather making its own. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and there, there are other mechanisms that allow for an instance to be shared, but that is not it. Okay, could, could we, um, could you elaborate on what other mechanisms? ZB, would you like to take this one? You've worked on this one a lot. Um, so is by other mechanisms, uh, we mean <clears throat> providing modules in. Uh, there's there's two levels we could talk uh, about. One level is in the, if you're using compartment mapper, compartment mapper is handling it, if I may say, fairly gracefully uh, nowadays. Uh, if you're using a pure compartment, uh, the way to provide uh, shared references to namespaces of modules you want to reuse uh, is to use uh, the, the modules uh, field and the compartment options. Uh, but for anything to be accepted uh, in there, the uh, the references that you pass need to be um, namespace objects created uh, by a module in a compartment anyway. So uh, there's a brand check inside of compartment implementation uh, where the only thing that can be passed as a module, needs to be a module that existed uh, in a compartment before. Uh, there's uh, actually a weak map, if I recall correctly, uh, where these are being looked up. So uh, when you create a, um, when you have a module uh, run in a compartment, uh, the thing the module exports uh, is not the original object reference that it exports, uh, even in common JS, surprisingly, uh, but instead it's a record that SES creates and passes into the, the system that wires up the module. Uh, so whatever module exports is in CJS is the default uh, field on uh, that on that record. Uh, but the object itself that is being returned as a namespace uh, is recognizable to uh, the compartment constructor later on. Um, and so the way I've been uh, handling this was if I wanted external uh, objects, to become namespaces, uh, the way to do that was to create a compartment for the sake of doing that uh, and provide an implementation in that compartment uh, that uh, of, of the import hook 
uh, and the import hook implementation uh, instead of doing whatever it should do, like reading the code and returning the code uh, or, or running the code and returning some of the results. Uh, it had barely an implementation. It would just take a, a reference from a higher scope uh, and return that reference. And then uh, everything else is on the side of SES where it wires up all the fields from what we return into uh, the actual namespace. Uh, and that can be grabbed and passed into the modules collection. Okay. Yeah, that that's the that's the crux of it. That the module map values, if they're strings, have the beha behavior of passing a static module a record round internally. And all of the other mechanisms, uh, one of the other mechanisms is that you can pass a module. Well, uh, the, there there are discrepancies between my memory and the spec and the implementation because they have diverged a bit, but. Essentially, you can stuff a module instance into a compartment by its value in either the module map or by returning it from the mod from the import hook. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I really appreciate that. Thanks. There's a, it, there was in the spec as written right now, I think that we and Modable have agreed that the direction we want to go is the introduction of descriptor objects that can be the value for all of the for all of the keys of the module map and the descriptor objects provide are a tagged union of all of the different behaviors we want to be able to pass into a, a compartment, passing the static module record as string, passing uh, a namespace, passing um, um, and, and and or or passing aliases and all of those other behaviors are just supposed to eventually become a tagged union. I don't think, that, and we're not currently implementing it to what the spec has written. Um, improvements on all fronts welcome, <laughs> and to to bring them closer together. Uh, with that, I think that that's a topic. Uh, uh, Absolutely, thank you. Cool. Um, let's, uh, I think that I want to do more. I want to make sure that we cover the topic of agenda building in this meeting. If we run out of time, um, the big question. So, uh, we have a lot to talk about amongst ourselves at Agoric about endo, but we do not have a weekly meeting dedicated to endo apart from this one. And I am wondering um, what I, what I would like to entertain is the idea of cannibalizing this meeting for some topics that may not be, that are apropos of endo, but not necessarily useful, um, for our guests at MetaMask. Um, the, in particular, for example, um, we need to have a conversation amongst ourselves at Agoric about, uh, the structure of the endo repository, um, for purposes of accelerating developer velocity in Agoric SDK. And some of the things that we have discussed are moving some or all of, or is it, moving packages between the endo repository and the Agoric SDK repository so that they can be tested against each other more fluidly. I see Mark unmuted. Yeah. Um, uh, so first of all, uh, I, um, I do think that uh, MetaMask uh, should be interested in those topics, and and I would like, I would appreciate them to to attend and offer their opinions as well, because certainly whatever we do there might very well affect them as well. Um, uh, and the I think the you know cannibalize I would like to can to cannibalize so to speak this meeting, just to reduce the total number of extra meetings. Um, uh, of you know of meetings that I need to attend because uh, it certainly um, hurts productivity. Uh, more meetings, um, uh, but on the other hand, we want to be be careful not to starve the issues of mutual interest. So as long as the the you know these other topics are not starving the progress that we want to make jointly, uh, that is what I would like to see as the outcome. Okay, so it sounds like, yeah, uh, I'll, with with your permission, thank you everyone from MetaMask. Um, all, uh, 
I will keep, uh, this will be the endo meeting for all topics pertaining to endo, including the ones that, uh, the, that, that are more operational. That, that, that means that I might, I might feel, uh, inclined to pack the agenda with things that are boring, like project management related stuff, um, issue backlog grooming, that kind of thing. Um, all right, cool. Um, I'm satisfied on that front. Um, it, please talk to me out of band if if uh, if there are specifics uh, that uh, that we haven't covered. Um, okay, with that, I think that uh, I'll give a demo of where I am with. No, do not upgrade iTerm right now. That would be bad. Uh, <laughs> let me share my screen. Okay. Oh, well, let's first give some background. Um, uh, per our grant from MetaMask, I have been working toward an end of year deadline that has swiftly gone past um, to get uh, uh, to implement peer to peer connectivity. Not uh, peer to peer is too strong. To implement connectivity over a TCP connection between pet demons. And the idea behind this is to. Um, make real what what Aaron has already de demonstrated with uh, having profiles of different users talking to each other. And uh, as uh, as Dan Connolly recently reminded me, um, recapitulating Mark's demo of uh, geeks bearing gifts, uh, that is to say, um, Mutually suspicious parties running separate demons and interacting with each other and having persistent capabilities between them. The uh, to that end, um, because of this formula-based design in the pet demon, uh, what happens when an, a connection like what what causes the connection to be uh, re requested and what happens when it uh, disconnects is interesting. Um, because we do not want multiple incarnations to uh, of the same object and to uh, uh, to to meet each other. Um, so uh, I have a, I have done most of the machinery, I think, at this point to make that possible. That included um, a whole bunch of just life uh, just user experience improvements like being able to have directories within a pet name store. So pet stores that contain pet stores, like uh, like a file system. Um, and uh, that was necessary to create some special namespaces. Um, and in this particular case, I'm introducing a networks directory. And the networks directory is significant because whenever you restart Endo, all of the networks have to be rebooted. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to reconnect or otherwise a third party wouldn't be able to connect to you until you asked for a connection outward. So that, so that's the one thing that's special. They're, they're a kind of pin. I will also be introducing pins in the future. Now that I know that that's trivial based off of this, um, that is to say formulas that are implicitly, uh, reconstructed every time you restart the daemon. Um, so for example, if you had a worklet that was doing a cron job, um, you it would have to be it, it wouldn't it wouldn't know to fire off your cron jobs unless it had been instantiated so the restart restarting pins will be necessary for that so the way this is work going to work is that the networks are a namespace that you as the as a as a user can manage you add pet names into that namespace when you remove them that is managing what names are in there is, is is equivalent to managing which network connections you can make outward and can receive inward and so there's a special caplet uh design that allows for that and let, let me let me just start with that i'll start with the loop back um so over uh how are we doing on size is this legible i'm gonna actually i know it's not i'm going to increase the size a little bit how's this it looks good here. All right. So let's take a look at network loopback. This is this is the basis. This is how network. This is the a demonstration of the interface of a of a network. Um, 
This is a, it is a maker that receives as its powers any nonce locator. I'll get into that later. Um, and it implements a function that tells you what addresses it, uh, uh, what addresses it's able to listen, that it is listening on for the purposes of creating invitations to connect. Um, it can tell you which product, whether it supports connecting to a particular protocol and then has a connect method. And the connect method is responsible for taking an address and providing a nonce locator from the remote side. And the nonce locator is uh, an object that implements a locate function. The locate function accepts a formula identifier. To get this far, I had to do a number of things that made it sure that the nonces are actually nonsical, if you will. Um, nonce, which is to say that every time you re reset the daemon, it's going to have a completely unique, unique set of nonces for all of its objects, including the ones that don't really change, like um, like the root object, which is the, the your your host, um, your your own host object, and um, and some other things that are constant. They each get different addresses every time you reset. This is effectively equivalent to changing their your public key. Um, the so yes, the nonce locator in this case is a loopback, and which is to say that we take the lo lo the nonce locator that we are presenting to the outside world and presenting it back to the inside world. This is more interesting with network TCP net string. So this is this is an implementation of a network that uh, uh, that that is able to connect over TCP. Its addresses have a protocol that is TCP plus NetString plus JSON plus CAPTV version zero, which is needlessly specific, um, or it might prove to be needfully specific. I don't know yet. Um, and the idea is that OCAPN, for example, might fit in this slot someday. Um, yeah, and uh, things that had to change, I had to add a context argument so that you could observe when you have been canceled so that you can shut down the idea here is that if um, if you if your network is canceled or removed from the pet store for networks, that it can observe that and stop listening and go away. Um, we get a nonce locator from the powers that we received. Uh, we set up connections, yada yada yada. Most of this is ho hum TCP connection work at this point. Creating CAPTP connections. Um, framing CAPTP connections, uh, the, the, the message framing for CAPTP connections, and all of that. So it has connect, it has listen, and it produces um, addresses. It tells you it supports protocol TCP net string JSON CAPTP zero and connect. So let's let's go through that as a workflow. And okay. uh, go ahead. Not, that was not the same API, right? Uh, it produces the same interface. It should, um, if it doesn't, I'd be. Okay, because the other one took a nonce locator and this one doesn't. Okay, so the the how you create it's different, but what it gives you back is, it, also the the supports API looks different. Uh, it this should be the same, but again, this does require a whole bunch of ironing. I haven't, I have not. This has not been. This has been working on my machine for a very small number of days. <laughs> it's not not by finished by any means. It supports on the right is a predicate, and on the left it returns a list. Oh well, that's wrong. Okay, okay. you you're correct that this is your spidey sense is correct. Okay. it happens to work. I will figure that out as I write more tests. <laughs> um, so uh, endo make. Okay, so let's give, show the endo command again. I've introduced some common aliases that I think will be unsurprising, like ls and move and copy. Um, I'm going to start using those. Endo mic sers. Okay, so endo list first. We're endo reset. Endo make sers uh, network loopback. And we're going to give this hello, which is our nonce locator. 
and um, special name for the nonce lo locator, a special undeniable pet name for the nonce locator. Um, all it's of okay the... that it's spelled the way that it is, right? It's deliberate. Okay, I wasn't sure if it would explode. <laughs> it's in German, not in English. I see. <laughs> Uh, it's in SMTP, not in English, not even ESMTP. That's the joke. But <laughs> never be able to read EHLO. Uh, yeah, in a future version, when we make a better nonce locator, I've I've definitely reserved EHLO. <laughs> this this should probably have a new name, but I so so far Endo LS uh, special. Um, they're all four letters. And I am needlessly trying to perpetuate that pattern. Um, there will be a pins, for example. Eh. Endo make source network loop back with the powers of just a nonce locator. And let's name it neps.loopback. Cool. It didn't explode. Um, so now if I do endo guest uh, Alice, I now have a guest who I want to communicate with or I want to invite to communicate with me. I can say invite Alice and the invitation will come up. This is not the final form in, in multiple dimensions, but this is, uh, it, th this is illustrative anyway. Um, these are the addresses that I'm currently listening on. So when I tell Alice to connect to me, this is how she can supposedly the, the Alice better be me if we're loop back, but that's another story. And then this is the nonce and, um, and formula type that I am endowing my guest with. So then if I do Alice and, and invite Alice and then and do accept invitation from Bob, let's pretend I am both Alice and Bob today, since this is loop back and don't show Bob, um, did you just create Bob? I just created Bob implicitly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, the this would be equivalent to running endomic guest Bob first. Uh, th that's done implicitly behind that in the way that I explicitly created Alice. Um, and that's as far as I've gotten. You can't yet send messages. Um, you can invoke methods. Uh, I'm relatively certain that this is broken in at least three ways. I know that I'm going to change the format of this. Um, it should be something suitable for dumping in a QR code, among other things. Um, and yeah, that's where I am. Uh, let me show you how much it took to get there. So far, uh, so all that framing code and stuff doesn't do anything. I'm sorry, what framing code? You showed us TCP framing code. Oh yes. Oh, you're right. I didn't. I have done that. Uh, endo reset. Endo make t uh, uh sers network. Oh, okay. Let let me let me give you a let me show you this again so that you know why I have to do a thing. Network TCP net string is going to request from self a host port. Um, and it's going to give it this pet name. And apropos of a conversation I had with Dan Connolly earlier, you can preempt these requests by uh, in this case, I'm going to endo make 127.0.0.18922 and um, not make eval and assign that the name TCP net string JSON at TP zero host port. Um, so that when I run endo make source network TCP net string with the powers of self and the name nets TCP, it's going to just start. Okay, cannot load it. Oh, right. Uh, unsafe. This has to run under node. It can't run inside of a caplet. There we go. 
And now, <laughs> uh, Al, when I invite Alice, that address shows up in the invitation so it knows where to connect and it knows what nonce to locate. Um, oh, let me show you uh, RSVP. Um, this, uh, this RSVP namespace is... Uh, it's a pet store for all of the nonces that you are willing your your nonce locator to be able to address. I am not sure about this design, but it seemed... I am certain that it is necessary to do this in order, in the current implementation, to prevent the uh the guest to make up nonces and just request them to come into being um currently the internal implementation of providing um providing the uh an instance for a nonce for many of those um it can create them from whole cloth from random numbers so um somewhat limiting the um your guest to connecting to explicitly invited nonces seemed safer for now and you can remove them. This is a manageable namespace. I can endo rm rsvp Alice, for example, in order to prevent Alice from connecting back. This is a kind of revocation, maybe. Maybe this is a revocation. I don't know. Um, but the, at the end of the day, endo invite Alice, endo accept Bob is um is going to is going to work over TCP as well. Um they are connected. They are not yet able to do anything because I think I need to do some higher level, um, high, higher level work for managing the um, inboxes, um, message passing. Um, oh, we'll give it a try. Tell it, show us how it blows up. Okay. Send Bob hi. I think that's everything I need to do. Yeah. There we go. And how uh, did it know that that was anything to do with the Alice on the previous line? Uh, wait. Uh, endo invite Alice into endo accept Bob. Yeah, and in the moment, because I'm only using a single demon, Alice and Bob are the same. Um, they are just two names of the, the, the Alice's. It would be more illustrative if I had said Alice and accept Alice as re Alice replica. Alice and Bob are both the same. Okay. Um, but accept that uh, send Alice hi works because it's not being intermediated by a TCP connection. As it's in order to send messages currently, um, there is an internal facet to the daemon. Um, which does not stretch over the network. So the the next step is for me to implement um, is to implement an internal facet and to assume that uh, the uh, that all uh, that there's a guest on the other side of the, the, the that the interface on the other side of the TCP connection is a guest. All right, my brow is furrowed, but I now see how it blows up, which is what I asked for. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where I am. Uh, there, there's still still some work, and the good news is that there are a lot of pull requests that I can that I I, I can I can put reviews out now for a lot of the leading edge work that led to this, um, and hopefully I'll be done by the time reviewers catch up. Uh, that's me. Um, perhaps I can anticipate an Aaron question. Where can I find the branch? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Um, and, oh, the, the, the branch that, that captures all of this, I will send uh, the branch name to chat since that's probably the better place for it anyway. Um, that's, a uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll send the branch name out of band. Um, Look forward another, to playing with it. Yeah, another question I expect is like, how would I 
take this and then build Tor on top of it. It's essentially, um, I'm expecting that the with Tor, you need that TCP connection. It just doesn't have to be among the advertise. It shouldn't be among the advertised networks and invitations. So you would put, uh, well, I'd write the pins feature and then you would put, no, you don't need pins. Um, it would be retained by the network. So you would create the TCP connection and have it listening on one port and then, um, and then add Tor to your list of networks and it would request to the TCP device and proxy it. Uh, for those just tuning in, Tor, the Tor daemon does port forwarding um, to a local TCP socket. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to come up with a question for now, but I think I, I got to play with it to figure out what my questions are. Cool. Yeah. Um, Same. I, I think it looks really cool though. It's really yeah. interesting. I'm excited yeah. to see what implementation, yeah, what different implementations look like. Yeah. Um, do I still have Mark? Mark hasn't seen any of this. And I imagine that there are many questions about whether this is uh, sound. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, you do you do have me, but I I you did not have you did not have my attention during all of this. I saw that it was being recorded, and I was allocating my attention elsewhere. I'm sorry. Well, uh, we'll we'll come. We'll have a conversation about soundness. I'm sure. And the 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 the, the upshot of this is. Uh, I think I'm almost at the end of the spike and can go back and start documenting and cleaning and um, and, and and convincing myself and you that it is sound and great. Yeah. All right, we've got uh, eight minutes left on the hour, um, and uh, that was everything I wanted to cover today. Does anybody have questions or topics to close out? Um, I did work a little bit more on the React compartment thing. Um, it seems to be doing its job correctly, um, which is, uh, well, um, a sus compartment, you know, prevents access from say like the global document, this prevents access to the real document by rendering you in a JS DOM. Um, more, I guess, more testing and validation of its security properties to come. Cool. Yeah, uh, so, sorry, Chris, I didn't, you, you can go. No, no, go ahead, Thomas. Uh, I was, well, I was just going to say, um, I, I saw, I think you commenting on some of the work Dan was doing. I think he might have dropped off. But I've definitely been interested in seeing the work that he's been doing, uh, you know, uh, integrating you know, Agoric with Endo. Yeah. Uh, I would invite everyone um, to fiddle around with the playground repository I created. That'd be a great place to dump. Um, demonstrations uh, including all of Dan's stuff I think that would be a great place to put it and I'll I'll, I'll encourage him to do so um yeah he's, he's done a number of things they don't work everywhere on anything a lot of it's very Linux specific but uh playground playground is the name for now yeah it's it's kind of helped it's been interesting to see his kind of uh the approach he's taken without having some uh, some of the background knowledge and it's kind of helped me uh you know further develop like a mental model of how things maybe should look in the future yeah and those experiments have brought up a lot of good questions thanks um, i 
I uh, I have been working on the opposite of what Aaron built somehow. Um, so there's a I I managed to create a tool where you can hide DOM nodes um, from the rest of the DOM. Um, it's not perfect yet. It's very experimental, but it's a really cool project, I think. I was also showing it to Matthew. Um, and it could be pretty useful, for example, in MetaMask to display the private key, for example. So when the user wants to see the private key, then that tool would help you to attach it to, to the DOM in a way that it's not going to be very easy for other JavaScript code in the same page to access it. Um, so uh, I don't know. I just felt like sharing, I guess. Oh, great. So I, I do have one, one question there. Um, is it using uh, Shadow DOM? Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because um, yeah, I've been kind of looking into that as well. Um, uh, so closed shadow root. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's uh, it's not perfect. Uh, there are some known issues with using shadow down for that task, and also it's not a security feature, so that's also not ideal. But mm -hmm. I think I managed to find a state where um, I can kind of like take care of the the, the known issues with the encapsulation of of the shadow down. Yeah. Um, and it turned out pretty nice, but it's not perfect yet. So I don't know, it might work. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting direction and um, definitely um, looking forward to, um, I guess, comparing notes on that. Yeah, Gal, can I ask you to make that a topic at a future meeting? You can just edit the agenda, either putting it in future topics or plop it down somewhere on a concrete week. Yeah, yeah, you got it. I'll 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 get it there and uh, I can talk about it next week or the next one or whenever you want. Yeah, and I'll make uh I'll make a note to make a similar request of Dan um since Dan has some cool stuff for connecting to the agoric chain from a pet demon um using uh using the rest API, I think. Sounds good. I uh, I just sent the the link uh in chat in case anyone want to check it out. Lava dome Gotta love a good theme. Yeah, theme is a uh, is required. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna stop the recording. Thanks for coming. <laughs>